Hi. Hi. Are you sure you can prepare for product based companies through this course? Yes, sitting at home. No way. Yes way. Don't delay. Enroll now. Geeks learning together. Hello everyone, welcome back to Geeks for Geeks. My name is Muskan Agarwal and in this webinar uh, we are going to tell you guys how to use Geeks for Geeks properly. So I've been using Geeks for Geeks for past few years and I've seen like you know that everything is available on Geeks for Geeks but a lot of times students are not able to use it properly because they do not know how to right so all of us have faced this problem and you know i learned it after a few months so we have priyanshu with us he is going to give us a walk through of the entire website and how to use it properly in order to you know like you know in order to make the best out of it whether you are preparing for placements or you are like you know geeks for geeks have uh, material for school students as well so he is going to tell everything about it but before i add him to the stream just uh, you know confirm me in the comment section if i'm perfectly visible and audible just give me a thumbs up if i'm perfectly visible and audible then i'll quickly add priyanshu to the stream Uh, yes, I can see some questions as well. We will be taking uh, almost all the questions in the end of the webinar. Okay, maybe the last 15 to 20 minutes we will uh, take the questions. Yes, I can also see a lot of thumbs up. I will quickly add Priyanshu. Hi, Priyanshu. Uh, hey, hi. How are you doing? Uh, so it's great. How are you? I am doing good as well. So let us start with having a brief introduction about you. Uh, so I am Priyanshu Bharatwaj. I am currently an undergraduate student at National Institute of Technology, Patna, in Computer Science and Engineering, and uh, uh, and I am currently interning in Geeks for Geeks as well as a problem setter intern there. And uh, I will be joining like in Tuesday in summer as uh, my summer internship. A uh, little brief in my comparative coding journey. So I am like master on Code Forces uh, and uh, six star on Code Chef. Ah, like, like that's all about me. Okay, that is really great. Uh, next thing I would like to ask you that how did uh, Geeks for Geeks help you since you will be interning at uh, Intuit? So did Geeks for Geeks help you in any way during your preparation journey? Yeah, definitely. Like uh, 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 in Geeks, uh, uh, if you talk about the placement per uh, perspective, like Geeks for Geeks is the only thing which becomes uh, which comes to our mind first as like it has a huge number of uh, articles and uh, different stuffs which is related with comparative coding even like uh, cs fundamentals like oop, uh, oops uh, CR, dbms uh, computer networks and all of the all other stuffs and uh, even the questions related to its depths are also present on geeks for geeks and if you have a, any coding doubt if you google it out just the first website you see there is like uh, gfc and that's why like it's a great uh, it's a great thing to like uh, uh, practice on Geeks for Geeks and like read articles from it. Yes, definitely. Then the next thing I would like to ask, what is the best thing about Geeks for Geeks according to you? Uh, so the best thing according to me, like if I am uh, maybe like uh, if I am going to uh, uh, like uh, for, uh, like two or three weeks before, I was being going to be interviewed by Intuit, and I just wanted like how which type of questions like Intuit asks or like any any company asks. So Geeks for Geeks has a section of like interview experiences where you can like go and read it out like all of the interview questions and like prepare uh, by that uh, by that. And, and that's a feature of, like really amazing. Right, definitely. It is helpful to me also personally, like you can just filter out the companies and it will give you a list of questions. And yeah. as we all know that the questions are repetitive as well. So it yeah, can definitely. help you a lot. Right. And maybe like uh, the mentality of like the recruiters is always the same. So like if they ask a problem on certain topics, then it's like high probability that they will ask uh, from uh, from that topic only. So like it's right. great to see that uh, see those questions before like going for an interview definitely 
also like i think every student should use gfg so what are your opinions on that and like how do you feel like is gfg different from the other platforms that are there and you know provide the same material so how is gfg different according to you so like gfg is maybe like a one stop solution for ev- for your everything related with like placement perspective if i talk about it. even like uh, even if with uh, competitive coding gfg helps us a lot like uh, uh, most of the uh, articles and like uh, if i if i want to search for an article or maybe like a questions uh, which is the second part of the problem then i can like just google it out and the first article comes which is like a gfg and it helps us a lot for uh, for that and like uh, the huge variety makes it uh, like literally different from all of the other websites which is present right definitely uh, okay so now i think uh, the most important part of this webinar is like the walk through of the entire website there are so many features and you know students are not able to utilize it properly because they don't know the right way to so maybe you can share your screen and give a walk through of the website and how do do you use it and how should the students use it in order to you know make the best out of it Okay, got it. So, like, uh, for that, I should uh, like to like present my screen, and like, this will be uh, more better to like show everything. Yes, definitely. Okay, so I am sharing my screen. So my screen is visible, right? Uh, yes, it is visible. Okay, so like uh, when we come to like the main uh, website like geeks for geeks dot uh, we have a sections like data structure, algorithms, interview preparations, topic wise practice, C plus plus language, and every other stuffs what uh, what we want to do. So like uh, if I if I want to like practice uh, like learn a language C plus plus like uh, uh, so we can just go with the articles and like all of the all of the properties like basic functions. Uh, and related algorithms, and uh, there is a comparison also like C uh, versus C plus plus, and all all of these stuff related with it comes uh, uh, comes in a uh, in a in only one articles, and I just uh, I can just find out everything what I want, right? Uh, uh, for uh, for uh, like practicing data structures or like for practicing algorithms, I just have to open data structures blog and everything related with data structures like what type of data structures are linked list uh, uh, and all of the questions related with data structures and all of the articles related with it comes uh, uh, like in a single article and i have not to like google it much uh, to find all of these okay so for every uh, for every uh, data structures i should like uh, it is like optimal to practice not all of the questions like if you go if you start practicing all of the questions like it will never end so uh, uh, the, uh, if you uh, you should uh, like start solving some problems of it like when you get familiar with what is linked list and how to implement it out definitely uh, after some time you will feel like you can implement more pro- problems also and you, you just have to build some logic about it so just uh, practice about like 40 or 50 per, uh, problems of each uh, each of uh, uh, the topic and like it will be in more than enough for like preparation for at least for the interviews okay and uh, the same thing goes for the algorithms like uh, there are a lot of algorithms greedy algorithms dynamic programming bit uh, bit manipulations and all of the stuffs and for every stuff uh, it is uh, like for dynamic programming i will suggest like practice more and more problems like uh, dynamic programming is like a really hard uh, uh, really like somewhat hard topic and like you should practice about 100 and 100 150 problems of it and like you will be become very good at it uh, very good at it so like that's uh, uh, for about data structure and algorithmic part and uh, geeks geeks has also uh, 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 a problem of the day uh, uh, pro- uh, where every, uh, where daily a problem appears here and if you try to solve it out uh, you will get a uh, bit, uh, some bit, geek bits, and uh, there will be also a streak, and uh, and the maximum number of a streak which is maintained is like appeared here, like global longest streak, or maybe like problem attempted, uh, all of these stuff. And uh, you can reveal uh, like your geek bits at the end to get rewards from geeks or geeks. So like that's pretty much about the website, and for uh, and for practice. Uh, and like for practicing some uh, certain topics, like maybe uh, maybe I want to practice some topics related with Addis. So I will just go to practice geeks for geeks.org. 
and uh, here i find i can find like the uh, all of the questions related with the topics like uh, let's say if i want to practice about array just i will go here and uh, and now all of the questions related with array uh, topic array is uh, listed here and uh, you can also see that uh, this question appeared in amazon coding around or facebook coding around or two more companies so that's also help you in like uh, practicing for a certain companies and also geek for geeks has a uh, as i mentioned earlier it has a feature of like interview series so uh, uh, there is a contest on every sunday like the, uh, that particularly focuses on uh, like company uh, company basis uh, company based questions like these questions have appeared in some of the uh, some of the test which which uh, which is conducted by some companies and you can attend it out definitely for like skilling in that uh, in that in that question okay and uh, uh, for reading any interview experiences let's say i have i want to read about inter intuit interview experiences right so intuit interview experiences and the first article i definitely uh, comes is like intuit archives and geeks for geeks and uh, maybe like i can go here and just read it out what where the questions asked in geeks for geeks for that uh, like in, in this round so it suggests me the article link the problem link same similarly like in round three what was that what was the questions asked so that's a really nice feature for yeah so i feel that pretty much from my side uh, yes definitely just one more thing that i would like to add uh, uh, just one second this company wise thing i think is very important i think if you are preparing for like you know you have your interview just you know one week after so you can just go through here and select for the company suppose i want to click uh, select amazon so it will show me all the commonly asked questions in amazon and i think it is very helpful personally like i think this is the most helpful part of gfg yes and many of the students are not aware about it like uh, i asked few of my friends they were not really aware about it so yeah i think this is also very important right yeah. okay uh, now maybe we can take few of the questions from the comment section just one second Uh, Ritesh is asking how to remember the TSA. I mean, so like, uh, can I answer it out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So, uh, like, uh, it's not, I think, really necessary to remember DSA. Like, can you relate it with uh, preparing for a JE exam? Do you have to remember like the formula of any mathematic problem? Just use uh, uh, like if you have to remember a formula for a problem, then definitely you cannot able to solve that question. Like formula should be in your mind for solving that problem. Like if I put some J advanced problem in front of you, like uh, 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 then you have to like think about more than the formula, like how how formula was uh, attained and uh, for that purpose you have to like solve uh, practice a lot of problems on that formula to just see that this is appearing here right so same thing goes with uh, like dsa in my way uh, like you don't have to remember like any data structure or any uh, any stuff just practice a lot and uh, uh, definitely uh, you don't have to remember like uh, how i i have to write the code of segmentary or how i have to write the code of data uh, dsu you just uh, you just like it, it's automatic like we have to you do uh, uh, let's say if i have to I, i'll give you now two numbers and just say how to uh, like let's add for me then you don't uh, have to have to remember like how to add two numbers like it comes to, uh, from your mind like two plus two is four so that's that's the same thing right practice is the key just basically like yeah uh, okay then people are asking that is there anything uh, like for mtech students like is there anything you guys can do to help people who are looking for mtech uh, part time from iits maybe a course which can help uh, we want to say anything about it so i'm not really much known about like what mtech students have to do 
I'm like a B-Tech guy, so I don't know much about it. Yeah, but maybe we can definitely try to forward this to our team and see. And like maybe there, if there are resources, we will definitely, you know, uh, try to put it down in the comment section. But for now, we cannot really answer this question. Okay, then pe uh, person has asked that uh, he has a gap of two years after 12th. So will it affect his placements? No, definitely not. Like um, people do, uh, nowadays don't mention even like uh, uh, when they had uh, in the resume that when they have completed their 12th or when they have completed their 10th. It's not right. really necessary. Yeah. On campus, maybe it will be a little bit of problem because yeah. some colleges but, put restrictions. Yeah, yeah, but but uh, definitely no. In my college, there was no restrictions like that, and uh, I don't know any uh, college has such type of restrictions. Like right, there will be, right. will be a physical matter, like uh, the company uh, uh, maybe it will be a cut of like so, uh, a person less than seven point five CGPA will not be able to cite like that. Right, right. Is CG important for placements? I think CGPA important for placements. So like just to maintain a threshold value, and that's like much. Uh, that's pretty much like it's not necessary to have nine point five CGPA. Then like you, if you have a CGPA around eight, it's fine. Yeah, I think it depends on college to college. Like in my college, it is like CGPA matters a lot. Like while placements, like people with 9 plus CGPA will get placed in the first two months and then it comes uh, around 8.5. Yeah, I think it will vary a college to college. So whatever your college is, it will vary according to that. Yeah. On campus CGPA matters. Again, as we already answered that it will depend on your college. Like in my college, it does. In his college, it doesn't. So it depends. Yeah, in my college it also does, but uh, like there is a threshold value for it. Like uh, um, most of the companies like puts uh, around seven, they are a three uh, uh, like the minimum limit, and every person hmm. above them seven like is able to set up. So like, what if two of two students are able to do the questions? Then what is the filtering criteria? It comes to CGPA. Yeah. Uh, then people are asking how to get into product based company if he is a, he is from a tier three college. So like I don't think tier does a, it does matters like in on campus placement definitely it's like easier for uh, uh, for a IIT guy to get up get placed right because he had done a lot of effort in preparing his JE and just entered into that college. So like it's completely the same, uh, completely like the balanced thing. Like he did, uh, he, he did effort, uh, effort, he did place the effort in in like two uh, in eleven twelfth, and so it's very easy for him to like get placed. And for a tier three now now he has to do a lot of effort to like get placed. So and and at that that's not the case in most of the cases. Like uh, most of the companies, like even Google, doesn't cares about your tier of the college. That uh, only cares like what you have. Uh, uh, what you have is skills. Right. There are so many off campus opportunities that, you know, these big tech companies as well. Like there are various hackathons and competitions through which they hire. So, yeah, like I don't think the college matters there. Yeah. yeah. Then uh, Darsh has asked that any advice or roadmap for non technical yeah. uh, background students to fully utilize Geeks for Geeks? Mm -hmm. uh, am I audible, Priyanshu? Hello. Uh, guys, just two minutes. He will be back with us. Okay. Till the time Priyanshu is coming, uh, you can post more questions and then we can ask the questions to him. Okay. Any advice or roadmap for non-technical background students to fully utilize Geeks for Geeks to enter the IT field? Okay. So if you're from a non-technical background, depends on like what post you're applying for, for, right? If you are preparing for data structures, 
okay one second the, if you are preparing for data structures then as uh, priyanshu mentioned that you know there are uh, different different data structures and for each data structure there are around 10 to 15 questions so you can try to you know go through each and every data structure suppose you choose array so try to solve 10 questions on array and make sure all these 10 questions are different it is of no use if you solve 10 easy questions it is better to you know solve three medium or hard level questions according to my opinion right so you can uh, like you know like oh, one second priyanshu is back uh i think i am not able to like open my camera now because like there is no light in my area now <laughs> i lost okay. my internet connection for that also okay okay no problem so i was just answering this question maybe you can also take this up that he is from a non technical background and he wants to enter into the it field so how can he utilize gfg uh, i think like you should start with uh, language first like start uh, understanding one of the language maybe like c++ uh, because uh, there is a lot of resource available in c++ as of now and uh, uh, for, for first few weeks, like uh, just to spend time on, on getting about language and then start solving some problems on uh, data structures, like, like start learning about data structures and algorithms and start practicing for them. And uh, after that, if you have a good depth in knowledge with data structure and algorithms, start doing some of the projects which will help you like getting place somewhere. Yes, definitely. I hope that helps, Tarsh. Then the next thing is how much development is required as compared to DSA? I think uh, with respect to placements, Ritesh is asking. Okay, so about development, I would recommend to have at least two good projects. And for DSA, you should be like very confident and very good with DSA to get placed in good companies. Uh, like DSS should be very clear and you should have at least two projects. Like both matters a lot, according to me. Right. Uh, then he has asked that, can you suggest any platform to join coding competitions? It may be a website or application. Uh, so like there are a lot of pro uh, platforms where the coding competitions are going on. Uh, like I, I also suggested uh, like two or five minutes before, like uh, there is a contest on Geeks for Geeks, which happens on every week, uh, like Sunday. It is especially focused on like interview experiences of the companies. Or maybe you can join like CodeChef or Code Forces uh, competitions. They are more on like competitive coding side, not on the uh, not much more on the uh, placement side. Like competitive coding questions are have a much ad hoc part and less like. They also have a uh, like data structure and algorithmic part, but the ad hoc part is much more than these parts. So whatever right. your uh, whatever is your interest, you can like go in that way. And also for right. geeks for geeks, uh, they, uh, we uh, we are having a Code India Code Challenge, uh, where the problems will be definitely like uh, competitive code, uh, in the competitive coding style, like much more ad hoc problems. Yes, guys, you can definitely register for Code India Code. We have some amazing prizes as well as, you know, the questions are, uh, it is not like they are, they are really high level or really low level questions. We have different, different level of questions. So even if you are a beginner, you should definitely participate in it. Uh, yes, and the and, link uh, for... I want to... Yeah, yeah and what I want to add, like, they, uh, they, they have, like, uh, really awesome prizes. And for the first prize, I know, like, they are giving uh, maybe a MacBook Pro. Yeah, you can just check out the website. We will definitely put the uh, link to the website in the description box below. You can just check out the website and register if uh, the contest interests you. Right. OK. Uh, then the next question is, uh, give suggestions to learn programming fast. So like, there is the only way to learn programming just uh, just start solving problems like first uh, read a, an editor uh, like read a language from uh, from some of the articles or from some of the video lectures whatever you uh, feels better for you and then start solving problems that's the only way right i think many people are asking your code forces handle 
like people are asking is this priyanshu underscore x underscore uh so i have two ids priyanshu underscore x as well as uh bunty underscore x like bunty is my uh like home name maybe okay I yeah i can see a lot of comments so i, I was like okay let's just answer them uh how is this sheet and this sheet okay guys you can follow i think just stick to one sheet like they're asking about like which sheet to follow just stick to one whichever you're following like people first do one sheet and then move to another don't do that maybe yeah then, like, huh. uh so uh, for that question like dsa first or cp first mm -hmm. i should answer that question right 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 okay so uh so like it depends how many how much time you have right now because like if we're in the first year or second year i would suggest to go for a cp uh go for cp like uh you have a plenty of time like you can spend one or two years in it so like just start solving competitive pro programming problems they don't require much data structure or algorithmic skills the only required skill is like you should have a brain and like uh, you should know how to solve and ad hoc problems and uh, and by solving the problems you will also gain some knowledge in data section algorithms and you, uh, and dsa will be like very easy for you to like up, uh, after doing cp uh, but if you are in third year or maybe on a fourth year student i would recommend to go for dsa first because the placement is coming now and you should be prepared for the company it, like cp is not required as much of a, uh, for company perspectives dsa is required for that so you should first go for dsa now right okay then how to master algorithms using gfg i think priyanshu has already answered it but uh, maybe you can take it again if possible so uh, how to master algorithms like the gigs 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 has a section of algorithms and uh, in that section you can go and like uh, pick any of the algorithms maybe like a greedy algorithms or a brute force or any of the stuff and just click it out you will get uh, several of pro uh, several problems related with it and just uh, uh, go on a practice go on the practice portal and solve all the all the problems what you feel better right uh, people are asking some project ideas for c++ like uh, just one second can you suggest some good projects on c++ one then is all so i know uh, like game development is basically done in c++ or maybe like i'm not a dev guy first of all so i don't know much about the development uh, development and projects i just did a, you know one or two of my projects just for a placement sake of perspective uh but uh, yeah i can suggest you like you could go to make a library function uh, if you want to go with in competitive coding site uh, to make a project on c++ you could uh, make a, a library maybe for a segmentary a generic library for that and that's all i can suggest right uh then gopal has asked that uh, can i still crack product based company if i am in fourth semester or he's late no so no one is late at any moment of time just i i would suggest like just to start problem uh, solving problems on very uh, any topics uh, what you uh, what you feel uh, like you have a weaker in you are weaker in that area maybe like uh, uh, if you are a complete beginner uh, then just start solving problem uh, problems from the basic level like start with brute force and greedy then uh, graph uh, then tree then graph and then dynamic programming or all of the stuff and that's all like and and also fourth sem is like not uh, not a late I, i also started my programming uh, in fourth semester so it's not definitely not a late yes uh what is the best practice to approach to the solution of the problems ritik is asked uh so for uh, approaching the solution to a problem like uh, if you know uh, if you know that uh, like the problem is not out of your league first of all don't try a problem which is completely out of your league maybe i could suggest like if you are solving easy problems for now don't pick a hard problem and waste your time like it's completely a waste uh, just pick a problem which is just uh, like 
not exactly below your level and not exactly off your level, just up your level, uh, just upper than your level and just start solving it. First, try to focus like two or three hours or maybe four hours uh, to just practice that pro uh, and solve that problem on your own. And uh, if you don't get any ideas of it, I would suggest like after four or five hours, you just go and read it, read it, uh, read it as well. And not all of that tutorial part, just start reading first, uh, first few lines of it. You will get some ideas related to, to that problem and just start solving in your, on your own only. And that's the, uh, that's the most optimal way I know about like solving any problem. Right, like first try and then see the solution. Right. Yeah. DSA in C O C plus plus. Like, what language? Like, people ask this in every webinar. What language uh, will you suggest for DSA? Uh, so, like, according to me, uh, like first I started with Java, uh, but after some time I was like facing some issues with uh, finding resources related with Java in competitive programming. Like, it's a huge issue uh, in competitive programming. Like, you have to find a resource about it. So I just, uh, for that perspective, I had to shift for C++ because a lot of resources are available in C++. And uh, C++ is really faster than all of the languages. So you will, won't pay, uh, feel any time limit issues and all of the other stuff. So I would recommend C++. Right. Uh, I think we have taken almost all of the question. I'll just go through the comments once again, if I have missed out any question. Also, we will wait for another 30 seconds. If you have any question, please uh, put it in the comment section. Also, after that as well, if you have any other doubt, maybe you can contact Priyanshu over LinkedIn. And yeah, you can ask your doubts from him. Yeah, his image is not visible because there is there's some network issue, uh, network issues. Nahi. I think there is no light in his area. So that is why. which website is used to practice CP? Uh, like Sai has asked which website is used to practice CP? So like maybe it's a dependent answer again. Like uh, if you really want to like practice competitive codings, you can uh, use uh, maybe like code forces for that and for so, uh, for and for like getting getting knowing about the algorithms and uh, all of the stuffs like related with uh, solving the problem. If you are not able to solve uh, some part and maybe the problem requires segmentary, then you uh, then you should search in or search on Geeks for Geeks for reading that articles. So I think that's that's. A I think there are so many websites. Just follow any one of them. Like in my initial years, I used to think that Code Chef is better or Code Forces is better. I used to explore various websites, but I think following one website is more than enough. Yeah, great. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Web development, machine learning, which one has more scope? Uh, can you take this up? Uh, Shishti has asked web development or machine learning, which one do you think has more scope? So I think, as I mentioned earlier, also, I'm not a dev guy. I am like, I just do CP only, but uh, for what I know about what I know, like web development has more scope than machine learning. Yes, <clears throat> but I think like I think Srishti, you should uh, explore both of them and see what interests you, right? What interests you more and then you can uh, try exploring that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think we have addressed all the questions. Uh, guys, we'll wait for another 10 seconds. Maybe you can uh, put any other question if you have. Also, people are asking for your LinkedIn profile. We will uh, definitely try to put the link in the description box below and you can reach out to him from there. OK, let me share it. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you can put it in the comment uh, box. I have shared that. Second private chat, maybe. Okay, cool, cool. We will put it in the description box. 
So Yash has asked that I have got five months for internship drive, and he's currently in fourth semester. Please tell what to do. He is currently a beginner. Okay, so like if you have five months only, I'd suggest to go for DSA. Not much about like you can try competitive coding also, but it's really necessary for you to uh, for uh, just for now like uh, know all of the fundamentals of data structures, maybe like linked list, stack queues, or, and all of the stuffs. And uh, for that, you should like just pra uh, start practicing on uh, like selecting any topics on Geeks or Geeks and just start practicing it out. Right. Cool. So, open source or competitive coding? I hope people are asking open source or competitive it's coding. It's the most controversial, controversial question. Right. Why not both? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, it is not like if you're doing DSA, you cannot do CP. If you're doing CP, you cannot do open source. Maybe try yeah. your hands on everything and whatever interests you you the most, then do it. It is not necessary that if I am doing DSA, you should also do DSA. Or if Priyanshu is doing CP, you should do CP. Like maybe nothing yeah. interests you, right? Like what interests you more? Just do it out. I'm not saying right. only do comparative coding or only do open source. Right, definitely. And I've seen questions like, can I finish competitive coding in two months? Like, it is not a course jo kar sakte in two months, right? Right. Like in two months, I, I don't, don't think it can end. I don't think competitive. Like, how can you finish competitive coding? There is all, always so much to learn. Khatam kaise kar sakte hai? So, right. Uh, how to crack comp there are so many questions on Ola and Uber. I don't know for what reason. They are asking how to crack companies like Ola and Uber. So like uh, what I saw for Uber, uh, they prefer a person having great competitive coding skills plus great development skills like for Uber, uh, coordination and all of the companies related to that. I just I just like uh, viewed that I uh, noticed that they prefer both of the things like you must you must have good dev skills plus you must have good CP skills. Right. Oh, so he's my friend of mine. Like. Okay, okay. Uh, people are asking reply on LinkedIn. Okay, guys, after the webinar, you will reply to all your questions on LinkedIn. Don't worry. Uh, yes. Um, yes, I think we have answered most of the questions. Thank you so much, uh, Priyanshu, for doing this. I hope you know people are able to use GFG properly. And also, a lot of questions were around competitive coding and interview preparation. Basically, I hope it helped a lot of students. Thank you so much yeah. for coming and doing this. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining. So before ending this live, I would just like to tell you all that, uh, you know, Code India Code is here. And there were so many questions around, you know, coding competitions and everything. So I think this is the right time to register for it. And, you know, we have questions for all type of students. It is not like if you are very good at some uh, competitive coding or DSA only, then you can participate. We have beginner level questions as well. So do not forget to check the website for that. And yes, I will see you in the next webinar. Bye-bye.